Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today. And we left off right here about handmade humans, GMO humans, may hold a key to saving the world. So, and they gave you the scary scenarios and say, well, this is what we can do. We're, all, you know, we were looking at spraying, we we're looking at spraying the atmosphere to help fight climate change and global warming. Well, the climate's always going to be changing. In fact, we're good chance, and there's many scientists that believe that we're heading into an ice age, right? You have a, a record amount of uh, sea ice building up in the Antarctic, right? But uh, the only thing they want to talk about is how the North Pole is, uh, what, uh, melting. So they know this is happening. They know the climate always changes, but they like to make you th think that you're responsible for it. Of course, this came from the Club of Rome, where they all got together, these think tanks and that, and came up with a solution to uh, blame humans for... Uh, everything that happens as far as natural climate change so then they can uh, basically make you the enemy declare the human the enemy and they can do whatever they want like this where um, they they can go ahead and spray right and they're doing that anyways as part of the population reduction measures I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn sure of it that that's what it is part of it uh, also we might be able to uh, genetically modify people children so that they could be shorter so they talk about this solution, or refer to it as human engineering. It talks about modifying humans to make us better at mitigating and adopting the effects of climate change. Of course, it's intended to be voluntary, right? But remember what I talked about as far as engineer consent and manufactured consent. Manufactured consent, of course, is what using politics and law. And then, um, you know, if you don't, if you have too many children, uh, well, then they're going to go ahead and just genetically uh, engineer them because you've had too many. You've passed the quota, right? And then, of course, you have engineer consent, uh, which we were just talking about through propaganda and stuff like that, uh, that they can convince society that this is a problem, this overpopulation, that's a myth, that it's, that it's real, right? Like climate change, and then they will get people to, quote, do this voluntarily, right? Rather than being coerced. But it does make sense that they would want to make people eventually shorter, uh, because you're uh, you're talking about uh, you're talking about uh, people, a small minority of, of of people that basically run the planet or would like to, and they're scared as hell of the majority of people, right? They don't want us here because we're too many. We're becoming more and more and more, so we're more of a threat. So what do they have to do? They have to engineer humans, the plebes, so that they are less of a threat, i.e., making us shorter. So it has nothing to do with reducing your carbon footprint. And making a sustainable planet. And if you think I'm joking about the uh, consent and stuff like that and voluntary stuff, uh, just think about it after you uh, hear this sentence. Finally, the main claim here is a modest one. Namely, human engineering should be considered alongside other solutions such as geoengineering. Well, let's see. If, if I was never asked whether I consented to being sprayed with aerosols on a daily basis uh, or someone, say, in South Asia or in Russia... We didn't have any say in this, right? It was forced on us, this geoengineering. Uh, they talk about it as if it's not happening. Well, it's already ha been happening for years, since the 40s, and massively since 96. So, th you know, if this is how they're going to handle engineering humans, let's just go ahead and say, just like chemtrails, they're already doing it. They're already engineering humans. So they go on there and said that 18% of the world's greenhouse gases come from livestock farming and meat, right? Close to 9% of human CO2 emissions are due to deforestation, expanding of pastures, 65% of nitrous oxide is due to manure, and 30% of seven methane, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, we know that what CO2 makes up for about less than 1% of the total greenhouse gases, so it's really not much, mostly water vapor than methane. Um, but most people, they don't expect most people to know that, so... So, since uh, cows fart out 500 liters of methane a day, they say reducing the consumption of these kinds of red meats could have significant effects on the environment. So, it goes on here and it says that some people will refuse to give up eating red meat. However, there are others who may be willing to give up red meat, but they lack the motivation or willpower. After all, many people find the taste of red meat simply irresistible, which may explain why many vegetarian restaurants offer dishes that taste like meat human engineering could help there so it goes on and it says that a potentially safe and practical way of inducing such intolerance may be to produce a meat patch 
like nicotine patch. People can then wear these patches before they eat to curb their enthusiasm for red meat. Human and to my fellow citizens of the world, um, I propose this, you know, uh, if they want us to do this voluntarily, quote, uh, how about the, uh, the British royal family voluntarily uh, give up meat, right? How about they give up their own organic beef uh, farms while at the same time, you know, they're, they're calling for us saying, Americans, you need to stop. I think it was, what was it, Prince uh, uh, Charles and that. Americans need to stop eating beef, right? Well, he has his own Angus cow and organic uh, beef farms. So when they do that and lead by example, then I think we can do that, right? If we want to. So it goes under says, uh, making humans smaller, human ecological footprints are partly correlated with our size. So it talks about how you're bigger and you're gonna take up more, right? So a way to reduce this footprint would be to reduce size. So yeah, it says, um, how can this be achieved, this reduction of height? Height is determined partly by genetic factors and partly through diet and stressors. So, so what would they like to do? Well, it goes on here and it says that um, might be able to use pre-implementation genetic diagnosis to select shorter children. This would not involve modifying or altering genetic material of embryos in any way. It would simply involve rethinking the criteria of selecting embryos to implant. So, but the other thing too is, is like I said, they're already doing this. Um, you used to have uh, diet and stressors. Well, if you're poor, you're not gonna get enough eat uh, to eat. If your parents are separated, and um, because you were poor and you didn't have enough to eat, well, that's going to be a stressor, right? So you're going to have uh, not enough food and a lot of stress. You're not going to grow your height. So um, I'm almost wondering, you know, like me, I come from a pretty tall family. Uh, my grandma, my mother, and my sister are all the same height as me, yet my father was about, you know, three inches taller than me. So I think I actually got the short end of the stick as far as that goes. But uh, for whatever it's worth, I guess it's more economical, right? But I guess it makes you think, right? It makes you wonder, have they already been doing this? Is that what, you know, the 80s and that was all about in the 90s? Lowering birth rates through cognitive enhancement. Another way to reduce the footprint is to lower birth rates. It says that there's available methods such as contraceptive, but there's a strong evidence that birth rates decline as more women receive adequate access to education on population reduction measures. See, the reason for promoting education is to improve human rights and well-being. See, that's what we were talking about. We were just talking about that. Clever, aren't they? Then we have pharmacological induction of altruism and empathy, you know, caring about other people. Many environmental problems are collective action problems in which individuals do not cooperate for the common good. But if people are generally more willing to act as a group, we may be able to enjoy the sort of benefits that arise only when large numbers of people act together. So it uses the example of using hormones and drugs that will uh, make people more willing to share their money with strangers and behave in a more trustworthy way. So it says, again, I'm not proposing that we coerce someone to take these pharmaceutical measures. I like how they uh, include these other examples. Others, uh, examples of human engineering solutions might include increasing our resistance to heat and tropical diseases. Sounds great, right? But in reducing our need for food and water. It's funny, too, because he says that we should take this seriously. It should be clear that human engineering is less risky than geoengineering. Well, how would they know unless they were already doing it, right, for both? And then it goes on and says that much of the technology involved in human engineering is already safe and available for other uses. Well, how would they know that, right, unless they're already doing it? In response to climate change, some people have proposed we adopt something akin to China's one-child policy. So given the enormous risk and the scary scenario that these uh, experts provided for the readers, they said we should take seriously the idea that we may need to change ourselves if we can't change the environment. Well, what if we're being, what if we're not changing ourselves? What if somebody else is changing us? Human species may split in two. This is from 2006, this article. Humanity may split into two subspecies in 100,000 years. Time is predicted by H.G. Wells, an expert has said. And of course, why did he write about that? Because he knew that this was coming, where the elites would stay themselves in order to run the planet efficiently, because they know that they need to have all those things that they're telling you that you, you don't want and you don't need in order to keep the planet going, while they themselves will have it all. They'll be tall, right? We'll just be this mixed hodgepodge with no arms and little ple uh, stubby little legs.
So it says here that the human race would peak in the year 3000, he said, before it declined due to dependence on technology. People will become choosier about their sexual partners, causing humanity to divide into subspecies. And of course, that could be driven by policy, right? You got to marry the right mate to have the right child. Um, it says here the descendants of the genetic upper class would be tall, slim, healthy, attractive, and intelligent and creative, and a far cry from the underclass, right? Humans who would have evolved into a dim-witted, ugly, squat, goblin-like creatures. It's interesting that he says that the physical appearance of these um, upper class would be better, right? Their health, their fertility would improve. Men would exhibit symmetrical facial features, look athletic, have square jaws, deeper voices, and bigger Johnsons. Leaving off with this, racial differences will be ironed out by interbreeding, producing a uniform race of coffee-colored people. Next up, the, the eunuchs reveal clues to why women live longer than men. Castration had a huge effect on the lifespans of Korean men, according to uh, analysis of hundreds of years of these family records. They lived up to 19 years longer than uncastrated men of the same social classes and even outlived members of the royal family. So it says the researchers believe the findings show male hormones shorten life expect expectancy. So maybe this is what you, they want you to do voluntarily as well. Is cut off your Johnson. So BC Medical Insurance to cover uh, phalloplasty for transgender men from October 5th. Rights advocates are welcoming news. A surgical penis construction procedure for transgender men will be paid for by the public medical insurance in British Columbia. It will be cover covered under the medical service plan for up to five people each year. Yet at the same time, if you have more than two children, uh, you may not get help, right? Or you won't get those incentives anymore or you'll be punished right that's coercion that's the engineered consent that i was talking about manufactured consent it says not everybody who has gender identity issues feels the need to modify their body completely the term also uses gender reassignment i think this illustrates that we're slowly getting educated as a society around transgender health issues and just around transgender equality z and her i think that's how you pronounce it toronto toronto school board guidelines on gender identity allows for non-masculine feminine pronouns so it's, these are uh this is a poster from the tdsb safe and positive place campaign safe a positive space love has no gender so positive space 101 language hurts statements such as that's so gay are derogatory gender is complex masculine feminine are labels not definitions unwanted touching sexist jokes spreading rumors or name calling are not okay that's bullying right and it says here be sensitive not everyone is straight take action speak out and speak up against sexist homophobic transphobic and heterosexist behavior and question your assumptions but whatever you do don't question what your government is doing. Okay, so it says the Toronto District School Board this week issued a set of guidelines on how schools should accommodate transgender students, spelling out everything from what washrooms they can use to how teachers should address them. Goes down says the stated goal is to promote the dignity and equality of those whose gender identity and or gender expression does not conform to traditional social norms. Yeah, remember this, the guidelines come a week after uh, they drew criticism over its posters featuring a young male crossdresser, part of the school's board's campaign against gender-based violence, and for linking to a website that explained how to use vegetables in sexual play. That was their form of sexual education, using vegetables and stuff and teaching them how to uh, uh, do all that stuff. So the rule allowing pronouns such as Z and her is yet another example of the board taking political correctness to the extreme, says Mrs. Wilson or Ms. Wilson. She says it almost starts to sound like newspeak like 1984, suggesting uh, these guidelines may encourage schools to highlight differences rather than make all students feel comfortable. The world's first GM babies has been born, says the world's first genetically modified humans have been created. It was revealed last night. The disclosure that 30 healthy babies were born after a series of experiments and the U.S. provoked another furious debate about ethics. And so far, two of the babies have been tested and been found to contain genes from three parents. It says here that uh, they were a result of an experimental program from the Institute for Reproductive Medicine in New Jersey. It says here that uh, the fact that these children have inherited the extra genes and incorporated into their gemline means that they will in turn be able to pass them on to their own offspring, but altering the human gemline in effect tinkering with the very makeup of our species is a technique shunned by the vast majority of world scientists. 
They fear that this method could one day create new races of humans with extra desired characteristics such as strength or high intelligence. Hmm? So this is what will we'll return in part three. Thank you.